Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile, and I'm doing a haul video for the first week of December. I uh, got quite a bit this week uh, because I was a little excited, because if you've been watching a couple of my earlier videos, you keep hearing me talk about not being able to get into a uh, vintage store or antique store space. I've been on a waiting list. Well, guess what? I moved into a space. So I was on a waiting list for three different stores and I happened to watch a video that was posted by Jeffrey of Real Nifty Vintage who visited a antique store in Rockford, Illinois, which is about an hour from where I live. So not ideal, but I'd never heard of it. I uh, wanted to check it out. It claims to be the largest and oldest antique mall in Rockford. I uh, visited it, actually liked it, liked a lot of what I was seeing price-wise, and more important than anything, they had showcase space available. So I happened to be there and looking in the booth of a vendor who was there that day and kind of had an unofficial off-the-record conversation with them, uh, husband and wife team that were both there, and just said, you know, how did you like the space? In general, how do you do? And they said, you know, there's ups and downs, which I would expect. I've got plenty of years of retail experience to know that that's not an anomaly. But the most important thing that they felt was they always made enough profit every month to cover their rent. So that was key. And also what was key, since it was a little farther away than I wanted, it allowed me to uh, kind of buy out the option of working there. It was a little bit cheaper if I was willing to work one day a month, but being that far away, it was worth the extra money uh, just to be able to say, I don't have to do that and um, you know let the showcase kind of earn itself. So moved into it last week and that cleared out all kinds of Rubbermaids. It cleared out milk crates. It cleared out space in my garage. So I decided to refill it. So there's a handful of places that I went uh, that, that will be represented in this hall. I started grouping it more by what it was as opposed to where it came from, so it might be a little bit more interesting to go through. We'll see, and I'll try not to get into too much detail, so hopefully this video doesn't get too long. Uh, so one of the places that I went was an estate sale. I have not done a lot of those. I haven't always had the best success in finding either good materials at a good price or when prices are really low, it's relatively well picked over, and I just, you know, it, it just sometimes doesn't work out. But I was uh, with a friend who wanted to kind of see what the life, the day in the life of a reseller was. So we went sourcing and so I said, well, let's go to an estate sale. It's a little bit different. So it turns out I went to this estate sale on two separate days. Uh, the day I was with her, we ended up picking up a handful of items and they, uh, one of the things that they had available were milk crates. And I have found that I really like the milk crates because they're very nice to stack. They're sturdy, so there's not a lot of risk of collapsing or anything like that. They, you can fill them completely up, but because of their size, they don't get too heavy to carry. And I just like them. So I'm usually on the lookout for picking them up. They had some, they were selling them for a dollar, but most of the ones that they had were in the process of holding up shelves for the, some of the materials they were selling. So they said if I wanted to come back the next day, they would hopefully have sold out more and they would sell, sell me the uh, milk crates. So the first day I went, I ended up getting a few items kind of at full price. That was day two of the sale. So they were, I'm not gonna say picked over, but you know, people had already been through there. Ended up finding a few items that I was willing to pay full price for. And then the second day I went back to specifically to get the crates and they said, oh, hey, you know, while you're here, we have this program that you can pay $10 to get a rectangular milk crate, not the kind I was buying more of a, it was a cheaper version, but bigger and anything you can fit into it, you buy for $10. And I said, well, you know, I've already picked up some stuff yesterday, not sure I'm gonna have enough to justify. They're like, okay, well, if you just wanna buy stuff, it's 50% off. So I slowly started picking things up, and as I was going through them, I suddenly realized I was gonna hit $10, and that crate wouldn't even be remotely filled. So I suddenly said, well, let's get more. So that's what some of this ends up being. So these uh, first things I'm picking up are gonna go into the salt and pepper shakers that I picked up. Uh, these salt and pepper shakers are false graph. They're not marked, but you can tell by the looks. They also, all of the family dishes that they were selling were all false graph. Oddly, not in this color, so I'm not sure why they had these. Uh, also, oddly, they were priced $3 each 
as opposed to three dollars for the pair. So I had seen these the first day I was there and I laughed and walked away. You know, there was no way I would pay these even at a collector's price, pay six dollars, you know, for this. But when I could put them into the bin and effectively do the Drew version from Crazy Lamp Ladies uh, cost averaging, which is not a new a Drew concept, but I like it. I could throw these into that and technically they were free because I was already getting things in the crate that I wanted. These being added into the mix technically wouldn't add anything to the cost. So I went ahead and picked these up. If I do the cost averaging, I ended up paying $10 for that crate and within that crate ended up being about 25 individual lots that I would sell. So you're looking at under 50 cents per lot at that type. So you know we can just say this cost me 50 cents. Uh, timing wise, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on this colorway. It's a very traditional pattern. I'm not sure I'll be able to sell these on Etsy. And it's also worth noting that my antique, uh, the showcase I got at the antique mall does specify everything has to be pre-1979. So I have to be very aware of that as I'm picking things up, whether they go on Etsy has to be pre-2000. And if they go into my shop, they're going to have to be pre-1979. These I doubt are pre-1979, but I might be able to get them on Etsy at the pre-2000. And, you know, false scarf is fairly popular. These are, there was no floral designs or anything, just kind of the, the uh, I'm sure there's like the wicker rattan woven pattern on the top. I think that's fairly timeless. I Hopefully I'll be able to sell those. So those were picked up as part of, uh, that's just called the mixed lot. Uh, similarly, another salt and pepper shaker, well, <laughs> shaker that I picked up, this I'd also seen on the first day. It was marked, I think, $3 by itself and it did not have a mate. So I just left it. What had happened between the first day, or well, I was there day two, and then the last day, day three, when I did the bin, they'd taken a bunch of things that were upstairs. This had been upstairs and pushed them down into the basement because only the basement had the bin sale. So this had gone from being a full $3 up upstairs to then being part of the bin. So again, at tops, this would be 50 cents, maybe a little bit less. It's kind of a neat pattern. It is like a cross stitch type pattern. I've seen it before. This one is not marked, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of searching to find out actually what pattern this was. I did see the dishes were still upstairs. This one had been downstairs. There was some very odd organization style going on for this this uh, this uh, estate sale, but whatever. Um, so I'll have to, I meant I wanted to look at the dishes, but those were kind of being watched by the person working working the um, money box, and I didn't want to be too obvious of what I was trying to do. I don't know why. I just felt self conscious about it. So I, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on that. So uh, those were part of the haul uh, from the lot from the estate sale. But I did have some other salt and pepper shakers that I had picked up uh, during the week. These came from Goodwill. Um, this is a pair, it's unmarked, but clearly vintage. It's kind of got this little autumnal wheat pattern uh, going on the side. They're in really good condition. I really, I liked the, the size of them and kind of the shape. They've got this little rounded bottom with this indentation uh, along the side. So you get this kind of fun little silhouette that has a place for the original and the both uh, cork stoppers are in there. Uh, these, I don't, I, they might have been an impulse purchase because I did end up paying a full $2 for them, uh, but I did like them. And I was doing a whole display of salt and pepper shakers in my showcase at, uh, I guess I should name where I'm at, the East State Antiques Mall, and that's in Rockford on State Street. I was going to put a lot of salt and pepper shakers. We will see if they sell. So I just wanted to kind of maybe in preparation replenish my stock and I just really liked these. So once I clean them up, I think for $2, that will be kind of a nice investment. Uh, but then another pair of salt and pepper shakers I really liked. Uh, this is not something I would keep for myself, but <laughs> I do really like them. And I twist my arm enough, I probably would. These were actually, were half price. So I paid a dollar total for the two of them. And what they are is, I believe these are considered range sets because they're significantly larger so these would have been more available for as you're doing your cooking as opposed to tabletop. What I find interesting is they're marked, obviously, salt and pepper. But if you look at the top, unlike what is happening traditionally now, typically the number of holes on the top of the salt 
is lower is small is a lower number than the number of holes on the top of the pepper. These are identical and look at the size of the salt holes compared to the pepper holes. These people liked their salt. So I don't know if we were at an era when salt got cheap all of a sudden or just everyone you know wanted to have heart attacks because they are dated 1930. So we're in the depression. Maybe they wanted people to die. Uh, but anyway, I, and I'm assuming they're 1930 because what they've done is one of them has the Japan mark on the bottom and I have, to, I have not found this mark yet. If anybody knows what it is, please let me know. Uh, but that one says 19 and then this one has the same mark and that one says 30. So I'm thinking, and based on the design, I'm thinking these actually were made in 1930. So super cool look, super cool design, little art deco lines across the top. Just even the quirkiness of the fact that the holes are different sizes. I mean, I just love everything about these. And they're a buck total. I they originally were a buck each, so uh, half price, a buck total totally feel like this is something I'll be able to sell successfully on Etsy or if I wanted to put it in the store. But these, I think, will have, give me enough of a, a, a profit that would justify what I'm putting on Etsy. Now that I have a space, I am actually reconsidering or looking at some of that more seriously. I want to make sure what I'm doing on Etsy is, to a certain extent, worth my time. I've had a lot of sales recently or when I first started with Etsy that I was excited to have the sale but because I'm including free shipping, in some cases, once you take out the shipping cost and you take out the cost of goods, I was selling things for, you know, three, four, five, six dollar profits. And although that was great for me to cut my teeth on, that's not something I want to do long term because in some cases I'm not around to go to the post office all the time. So it, some of these items that I'm now really trying to focus on, it's like, let, let me get things either that I know can put it, will sell at the shop. And if they have a smaller profit margin, that's fine. It just kind of will support itself or try and find things with a higher profit margin. That's what will go on to Etsy. So those were all the salt and pepper shakers that I had picked up. Uh, we ended up doing, I found a couple of figurines uh, while I was there, or figural items. Uh, one of them was a uh, Blanc de Chine uh, Asian character. Um, this one is in really good condition, although I just lied because I thought her hand was in good, but it looks like uh, the tip of her fingertips are chipped. So that bums me out a little bit, uh, but she was a buck. I did get her on day two um, because I thought she was worth the dollar that they were asking for it. I still think she's worth the dollar she's a I, they're asking for it, but because of the damage, I might just put her as is in my showcase at the antique mall. Um, because something like this is only going to get any real money uh, if it were in absolutely perfect condition. She does have some crazing, so she's, she's showing her age. The item itself is not stamped, had the dollar price tag on it, but it is not stamped on its own. So there's a, not a lot of detail to really justify uh, a high price point on this. And so with that damage, you know, I'll probably still, I'll probably turn around and sell her for five or six bucks. Um, which is perfectly fine. Sitting in a showcase, it can sit there for a while. It's taking up a little bit of space, so I have to you know, watch that a little bit. But I think uh, that was still a good purchase even with that little bit of damage that I totally missed the day I picked it up. Uh, this item I also picked up at that uh, estate sale. This is a small rose. This one I checked really, really carefully, and I'm looking at it right now really quickly. And Yep, don't see any damage. Uh, a really nice piece. The label on the bottom of it, uh, as I've mentioned before, I've got a, a, a interest in German and uh, Austria, has a Hamburg uh, sticker on it. So it is German. I have not lifted the sticker off, so I don't know if there's any label underneath it. I think I'm not going to lift that off because I don't want that foil sticker to come off. I'm not sure if there's a particular amount of age to that because of that foil sticker, but it's uh, EB Latorf Hamburg and then the address. So I can do a little bit. I think that's the uh, reseller uh, that was selling it. It's still, it's, a, it's an attractive piece. It can go into my store. Most likely it will go into the showcase. Something this small with a nebulous background will probably not get, garner a lot of money on Etsy. May not be worth my time, but I did only pay a dollar for it and I thought it was worth every bit of that dollar. Um, the uh, Another figure uh, that I picked up while I was there is uh, this duck figurine. I had seen it the second day I was there and at that point it was marked $5 and I was not interested in paying that much for it. 
by the last day, this had been moved from the upstairs where it was marked $5 down to the downstairs so it could be part of the bins. And he fit very nicely in my bin. So again, cost averaging 50 cents. He is a special edition from the Birds in Flight collection limited series, Flight of the Mallard. So he is made in Taiwan, which I've typically stayed away from. I've been trying to focus primarily just doing the, uh, doing Japan marked figurines. But I know this still has some age to it, so it'll be perfectly fine going up on Etsy. And again, at 50 cents or less based on the cost averaging, this was a perfectly fine addition um, that I think will resell and it's in, it's in really good shape. Another item I picked up, and this I'm waffling, you know, continuing back and forth, waffling on whether this is going to stay in my personal collection or this will get resold. When my daughter was born in 1999, I started a collection of these White House Historical Association ornaments. Little did I know at that time, I literally I was starting it because I just wanted to make sure I had something that I could get for her every year. And unlike a Hallmark ornament that's at some point those series are going to end, this was something that it, they'd been doing them for 50 years or something like that already, that this was something I could pick up in 1999 and continue. And so I've received, I've ordered, ordered one or purchased one every year uh, since she was born. This one is actually 1992. And what I find interesting about it is it has never come out of the box because you can tell that ribbon is still in place from the factory. Uh, this one is a, an older image of the White House itself. Um, see if we can get it to focus on there. A little bit of glare. There we go. So you can see it's, it's an old illustration of the White House. It's a really attractive piece. Uh, 1992, it also happens to be the 200th anniversary. Um, this is something that really, when I purchased it, paid a dollar for it at the, this was again at the estate sale on day two, so I actually did pay a dollar for this. Then when I happened to come home, I just decided to look them up because I kind of like the idea that the collection I have is from the year my daughter was born beyond. So to have this weird oddball 1992 one, I wasn't sure if I necessarily wanted it in my collection. So for only a buck, I'm thinking, well, maybe I could resell it. And they do, they sell for between 10 and $15 fairly regularly uh, for the older ones, including this one. So he probably will go on Etsy. It's getting a little too close to Christmas. I doubt I'll be successful with it, but it takes up almost no, no space. So I don't really have an issue if I post it and it doesn't happen to sell uh, this season. You know, it'd be something that would be ready to be sold for next season. So I'll probably go ahead and list this. It wouldn't be old enough to be my, to go in my showcase anyway, but they do sell very nicely on Etsy and I do think uh, we'll have some you know, value there. Um, jumping to another little stack that I had in front of me, this was another Goodwill purchase. Uh, these were, in general, I hear enough of the videos that I follow that Avon is not something you want to spend time on. But I have to find, I have to admit, there's a lot of things that I'll see and I like them and then I turn them over and they're Avon. And so normally I put them back. These I went ahead and picked up because they were relatively inexpensive and I just thought they were nifty. There are these little holiday tin plates and I have a whole Daher collection of tin that this just seemed to fit really nicely alongside of it. It's just this nice little shape. It's marked Avon in the back and it's got the little hook to be able to hang it on the wall. They're super lightweight. Uh, I had two of them. They're both 99 cents. Uh, this one was on its own and this is the uh, Bouche de Noel and it's got the, the uh, recipe for that. And then this one actually is in its box. So this one is the recipe for the blueberry orange nut bread. And it's got its pa original packaging. And it also has the little sticker thing that goes on the back is still separate. And the plate is in perfect condition. So that was also originally 99 cents, half price of so 50 cents. So for 50 cents, I feel like these are something that's dated 1982. Can't put it in my showcase, but they were inexpensive enough that these might either be something, whether I put them on Etsy or I do enjoy being a part of several of the uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook groups uh, that I sell through. Uh, my favorite is Treasures from Yesteryear. Uh, there's also Show and Sell Vintage from uh, Instagram, which I just started participating with and they're, they're pretty active. And then also Ethel's Kitchen is a fun one. 
those groups, anyone can join them, uh, and then you follow them on Instagram or on Facebook. They do sales all the different all the time. They do like small items like this, and I don't think they're going to be too uptight about the fact it's Avon. They're going to like it because they like it or they don't like it. So these two additions for were inexpensive enough that I was pretty happy to add those to my collection. Uh, also at the Goodwill that I purchased at the same uh, same time is this uh, gourd shaped vase. Uh, I was a little concerned it was too modern. It is marked Made in Italy by Ancora. Uh, I still need to get a clarification of exactly when these were produced, if this will fall under the Etsy, but I think it, the Etsy rules, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, they were selling online. I paid uh, $2 for it. It was marked four, but it was half price. I paid $2 for it, and from what I could tell online, they were selling for $20 to $30 each fairly regularly. Um, so it was a fairly popular shape. I don't know if it's more seasonal. I didn't get too hung up. They were definitely 2019 sales, but I'm not sure if they were more fall. Uh, it's just a nice looking piece. And so this was just something that I thought was an easy enough piece to pick up, uh, right price, and definitely was gonna resell. One of my favorite pieces was also from a Goodwill. And it's something that I don't know a lot about yet. Um, I've actually posted on a couple groups that I'm a member of, trying to get more information. I'm in love with this piece. Um, the dining room table that I'm currently sitting at while doing this, the uh, hutch that I can see uh, off the side of the camera, are from an arts and craft mission style design. Um, I We got that when I, at the time we lived in a uh, craftsman style bungalow from the 20s. I had, we had the Roseville pottery. We had all kinds of arts and crafts pottery. This is very reminiscent of that. Uh, just the, the matte glaze, which I really like. Uh, the accents of coral. It's in absolutely pristine condition, but I don't recognize the mark. So if anyone's watching this and knows this mark, I would love the information. I've done a couple Google lens searches. I did some, some searches online. It, to me, it looks like an S overlapping a T in kind of a vase outline, kind of like a urn type outline with a base. But it's possible that the top of the T is actually the top of the, of the vase, and in which case then that S is overlapping the letter I. So I'm not sure if it's SI or ST or somehow that's related to the pottery. Uh, but so far I've had no luck on this, but it's a really nice shaped piece. I ended up paying $2 for this, so I knew I didn't have a lot at risk. Uh, even if ST ends up being out of somebody's basement, this will make some decent money because this is still an attractive style. Arts and crafts and mission is not nearly the way it used to be, but this type of pottery, if you've got uh, you know the earth tones in your design, this is fine. You know, this is gonna this is gonna cross into nouveau because of the nature of style of the berries. It's just a good looking piece. So I was really excited to have that and I just, I don't wanna post it yet. It'll definitely go on Etsy, but I don't wanna post it yet until I know who it is. I wanna be able to properly uh, attribute it um, just so I can get, the, well, I wanna get the most value of it, but that's also what I like to do. I like to be able to do that kind of research and then educate and inform uh, as people are finding, uh, finding my site, finding my products. Uh, another Goodwill purchase, okay. I'm gonna show you a lot. I'm already concerned this video is gonna get long. So it's not gonna be a surprise that in all of these hauls, I'm gonna have some mistakes. I'm going, to, I'm, going to have, I'm going to have laid an egg. Okay, I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. So I purchased these and I, I they were at a Goodwill. They weren't even marked. It was one of those cases where I put them in my cart and then when I went up, I meant to ask how much they were. But as he was going through and checking out everything in my cart and I bought a lot that day, he just rang these up at 59 cents each. I'm like, hmm, you know what? Couldn't have asked anything better than that. So I took them at 59 cents. Well, turns out they are marked the egg lady. Wasn't hundred percent sure the era. Did a little bit of research, discovered that the trademark for the egg lady was initially issued in 1990 and that the company failed to renew its trademark in 2004. So it basically existed in the 90s, possibly into early 2000. So technically these would most likely or within reason fall under the Etsy rule. The problem is they sell for about a buck to a buck 50. So paying only 59 cents, I really didn't get anything out of these. So most likely I'll just kind of hold them to the side. Uh, they're too new to go into my showcase. 
probably just holding aside closer to Easter. Maybe I'll find something else, maybe a small basket or something that these would look nice sitting into and I'll just kind of combine them into a nicer lot uh, just to make the most of them. Because I think they're still attractive. I mean, they're def they scream the 90s. I mean, that's when I got them, I kind of thought that's what they were. Uh, so finding the trademark search, you know, helped uh, verify that. They're still attractive. It's just they're not a lot of money. And I only have the two. So it's certainly not worth listing them on Etsy just to sell them for like four bucks. So we, we shall see what happens with those. Another Goodwill find. Uh, this is a piece of Nippon. Um, this is a really attractive footed bowl. Uh, it's hand painted with, uh, I believe those are dogwoods uh, on the inside rim with a really nice attractive gold trim, smaller one on the opposite side. The gold is actually in pretty decent shape considering the age. And I picked this up for three bucks. So I was pretty happy to get that. And then I found another piece of Nippon that was uh, priced at 99 cents. Uh, another primarily gold uh, painted. Uh, this has the moriage on it. Um, the dogwoods have a little bit of moriage. The little white accent pieces you can feel are raised slipwear. This one has quite a bit more of it. All of the gold is uh, dimensional, so you can feel that. Uh, Mark Nippon on the back, again, 99 cents. Felt I couldn't go wrong with that. Haven't decided if that'll go online. Most likely it'll go into my showcase because I think it'll just be a nice um, addition to have. Uh, another piece going back to the estate sale was this wooden trivet. It's not in the best shape, but it had originally been marked a buck 25, but it was in the basement so I could go in my bin. And so technically I got it for free or maybe less than 50 cents. Um, I've got a couple other types of trivets. I think this, this is definitely gonna be something I will sell in my showcase. Just taking a look at it, I'm gonna guess this is gonna meet the requirement of being prior to 1979, so I shouldn't have any problem with the owners of the antique mall. And I can probably get a few bucks out of it. It's in pretty rough shape. You can see like some of the wood's a little bit chip, chipped, but it's got the hole in it for hanging. There's, there's going to be a market for something like this that just people think it's just like a kitschy little addition. Another item that I threw into the bin is too new for Etsy and it's too new for my showcase. So this will probably be one of the face, Facebook um, posts or Facebook groups. It is a Laurel Birch um, Christmas ornament. And I take that back. I just popped it out. I had never looked at the back of the ornament because it comes, it has the original, um, it's got that little, the little circular price tag. I think that's a Bergner's price tag or maybe Carson Perry Scott. I can't remember which one that one is. Uh, I thought that was of the 2000s, uh, but it turns out Laurel Birch, uh, this is the Magic Cat ornament and it's Christmas 1991. So it's a little bit older than I thought. It's a simple brass ornament. It has a little tiny hole at the top uh, to be able to hang the hook through. So this could actually sell on Etsy. Again, couldn't be my showcase, could go on Etsy. I haven't even looked at this because I didn't think it was an Etsy sale. I can't imagine these are particularly valuable. Could be wrong. Uh, but it's what's nice about it is it comes in its original folder so that if somebody does purchase this and they use it as a gift, the folder is in absolutely pristine condition. So it was, again, it was a no brainer to just throw that into the bin. It took up no space and I was able to uh, effectively add that for free or cost averaging less than 50 bucks. Another item that got thrown into the bin, um, and this is what it started thinking that there was value you know, to making that bin. I'd looked at these, they were marked at a dollar each. And so everything would have been half price, 50 cents. So there were four of them. So I'm like, ah, two bucks. And then I started looking at some of the others. I went ahead and got the four. Unfortunately, when I was unloading them, once I got home, either during transit, I very easily could have done this myself, or I just didn't look at it closely enough. One of them was cracked. So I technically only have a set of three, but it's the Coca-Cola frosted stained glass pattern. Uh, these sell fairly regularly uh, from the, I think, believe they're from the 70s or the 80s. Um, if they're from the 70s, I'll probably put them in my, uh, my showcase, but I'm probably going to do them online because they seem to be selling fairly consistently at 5 to $10 per glass. So I have an odd set of three, which isn't ideal, uh, but once I decided to do the bin, you know, again, these all got cost. This would be, the three of them is one lot. And as I mentioned, I had 20 to 25 lots. So the lot of three glasses is only gonna cost me 50 cents. I'll be able to make enough money there, no problem. Uh, this also got thrown into the bins, uh, or into the bin, not the bins. We were not at the Goodwill bins. This was at the estate sale. I just really liked the lines of this picture. 
and it has the pontal mark on the bottom. So this is a blown glass pitcher with a plied handle. There's value to this, but I don't know how to value this um, because there's no maker's mark, there's nothing like that. It's just the concept, it's just clear glass, so it's not gonna be ideal. But again, cost averaging, basically this is no more than 50 cents into this. I'll be able to get that money back out of it. Um, and that is something I probably, it's, it's generic enough and the lines are attractive enough, probably could go in my showcase because that could be a 60s piece. Although I have a feeling it's more of an 80s, 90s piece. Um, also going into the 80s, possibly 70s, I remember these growing up. They are the little bookcase of coasters. So it's this little wooden container that all the books in here are individual coasters. This also went into the bin at the estate sale, so technically 50 cents. This can definitely go into my showcase because I think this would pass for something pre-1979 and I could probably easily get five, six bucks out of that because if nothing else, people like me will see it and go, oh yeah, I remember those, I wanna have those. And it's actually a nice big set of coasters. There's two, four, six, eight coasters in the set. So it's actually really nice to have. Another item that was thrown into the, uh, um, the $10 bin was this little um, horse pulling a cart that is empty in the back that I'm thinking was probably a candy container. It, it, I have the, it gives me the feel of the little, the little 3D dogs or the goose girl where they're sculptural, but then the bottom, they're hollow. So they would have been filled with candy and then sealed. I'm thinking that's what this is too, because to me, this is a little large to be a master salt. It's a little wide to be a toothpick holder but that might be what they marketed it for after you got it with a little bit of candy in there. But regardless, this was a, another example. This was downstairs that could go in the bin for part of the $10, but there was another one upstairs that they were selling for $3 a piece. So I asked the guy in the basement saying, um, hey, there was a second one of these upstairs. You know, I'd like to get them both. Can I put them both in the bin? He's like, oh, sure. So he ran upstairs, grabbed the second one, and they both went into my bin. So I'll probably sell them as a pair, even though I'm not 100% sure what they'd be used for, uh, but it'll probably be better to sell, in, sell, sell it as a pair. It does say made in Taiwan at the bottom, so I'm drifting a little bit, but when you've got some such good costs, uh, and this is just a really attractive piece, I think this was worth, um, worth picking up. Uh, the other item I threw in, and I'm not, 100% sure I should have thrown these in, but I, I've seen a lot of videos and people talk about these all the time. I picked up 10 of these. They're all different sizes, shapes, and thicknesses. This one's actually a pretty nice one. One of them was super, super thin. Um, they originally marked 75 cents a piece. This was the deciding factor that pushes me into the bin because at, I had enough of these that at $7.50 was the original list price, I was paying $3.75. I already had three or $4 worth of stuff in my arms. Yeah, it was, these took up almost no space in the bin. And they were pretty, pretty generous about how you define fitting in the bin. My bin was balancing by the time I was carried it upstairs and they were totally fine with that. So I have a whole group of these, probably will sell them as a whole group um, as opposed to breaking them up, but we'll see. I mean, I wanna be able to turn these, so I'll probably put a really attractive price point on them. I have virtually, again, the entire set, 50 cents for all 10 of them. So I might split them into two sets of five, you know, we'll see what I end up doing. But, you know, these were one of those things that a lot of people talk about. And what's nice is because they're super easy to ship. So I might also do the pack, set them up into um, packages that'll keep me under a pound because they're super lightweight by themselves. So maybe if I could do like three or four of them might keep me under a pound, I'll just have more, more lots. We'll see. So that was kind of a nice little addition to have. Also, this may have been a mistake, but the very, very first item I ever sold on Etsy was a set of napkin rings. These are not those napkin rings. Those napkin rings were far nicer. But what I really liked about this is clearly this box has some age, probably from the 50s or 60s. It's got the, the marbling to it. There's no labels anywhere on it. Um, they could be as late as the 70s, I would think, uh, I, but I wouldn't think too much into the 80s. But they are a set of brass um, napkin rings that, man, I did not see this. They're engraved. So anybody got the initials of B, I've got a great set of napkin rings for you. Oh, that stinks. Oh, well. Again, 
50 cents. I'm not really out much, um, but that's gonna limit what I can make them make on them because with that B, although maybe no one else will notice. I didn't. Uh, no, but I will, if I sell them online, I will definitely clarify that they have a B. You know, I, would, I don't wanna play those games. So we, it's gonna depend on the right buyer. So I'm not gonna make as much money, but it, it was still, for 50 cents, it was still a good purchase because it's a very nice box set engraved or not. Uh, this was another item. This, I think, might have been the other item I had in my hand at the time I went over to the bin. It is a set of a Bugs Bunny mug, bowl, and plate. They're dated 2000, so I'm right at the cusp of what's allowed on Etsy. Um, but these do sell fairly regularly in the $10 to $15 range for the set. Uh, so once it became part of the bins, this entire thing only had 50 cents in it. And I also had the Tasmanian Devil plate. They didn't have the full set, they only had the plate. So I might just throw that in as part of it, as long as it doesn't, um, the, the freight doesn't get too blown out of whack, um, that that would be a decent markup. If I, can get, if I can get $15 for that whole set plus shipping, it's worth it for me to do that. Another item that I picked up initially will be kind of odd. I have no interest in this basket. It seems fine, it's lovely, whatever. But what I actually wanted was all of the string that was in it. I literally had put on my grocery list the next time I went to, the, to Target to look for string because as I was marking things for my showcase, this this they make you use their label or their price tags. And their price tags are not designed to be hang tags. They're designed to be taped on. And there's just certain items that I'm gonna want to hang and I didn't have any string. So now I do, and it's old string. I mean, this 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 has not been opened at all. It's marked from Osco, which is a Chicago-based store. It's tagged Sundry and it's 10 cents. So, I mean, these this stuff has some age in it, but I will use the string. What I'll do with the basket, I have no idea. I don't know how to age baskets. I don't know if this is considered old or not, but I have a basket, so we'll see what happens to it. Um, another container that I picked up there, and this was, again, another odd thing that they were doing at the store, or at the estate sale. They were using all these containers to hold other things. And so this box, I completely missed the first day because it was being used to hold a bunch of stuffed animals. And I was walking from the back side, it was in the basement, I was walking from the back side, and I saw this distressed painting on the back on the back side. I'm like, well, wait a minute, what is that? And it what it is, it is a box that says success made out it's a it's a flowers are making the individual letters, and then it says Richard Hudnut Salon, New York. So I did a little bit of digging. Um, at the before I picked it up because this was going to take up a lot of space in my bin, and uh, turned out these things were selling for between fifteen and thirty-five dollars. There's two different styles. It was a counter display, from what I can tell. It's a fairly heavy wooden box. There's a little tray inside that is not particularly marked. I think it used to maybe have something glued to it. It's in not in the best condition. You can see the. The paint is a little bit chipped and you know peeling. There's definitely some peeling paint on the back. The hinges are a little loose. There's a little split. So I mean, this is not you know an ideal item, but you're, if somebody's still hanging on to their shabby chic decor, this is perfect. And the fact that it's from a salon in New York City, I think just adds some attractiveness to it. It'll be difficult difficult to ship. So this might be something I start with in this in my showcase just to see if I can turn it around for maybe 10, 15 bucks. Um, and you know, if I need the space in the showcase, I take it back out and try and sell it online for 20, 25 uh, plus shipping. But it is gonna take a little bit to ship because it's big and it's it's probably five or six pounds you know, by itself. So it's, it's definitely something I'll have to take into consideration. Uh, another item, this was from day two. I picked this up and did a little research. I've never, I've never been that into puzzles. I mean, I guess I kind of did them as a kid. My daughter was really into them, um, but never thought about reselling them until I saw this one. This is just cool. It's circular. It's dated 1965. It's from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And pretty much these have been selling fairly regularly during uh, 2019. There's two popular styles 
This one appears to be less common than the other one. Now, I don't know if that means it's less popular. There are more sales of the other style, so I'm not sure, but both styles are selling between the $20 and $30 range. So I need to make sure that this is complete. So, you know, in my ample spare time, I will see if I can put this together. Because uh, if it's not complete, then I'm basically just going to be selling it for the box. But if the puzzle is complete, I'll definitely be closer to that $30 range, even though the box itself is in is a somewhat rough condition. And because it's in rough condition, I'm concerned some of the pieces might have slid out. So I will have to definitely do a little bit of assembly work to see if this stays in. But I just think even the box by itself is very cool. It's uh, all the information on the back saying that this was from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's based on a piece, uh, a plate that's in their collection. Uh, it's just super cool. Also, another large item that I got. Uh, this was also part of day two because this is another Daher tin, uh, which I really like. This was also marked a dollar and I paid a dollar because it was day two. I'd never had seen one this large. So this is, I should have measured, this is probably 16 inches across. I've never seen one this big. And what I like about my the showcase that I have is it's probably about five feet tall, uh, maybe a little bit taller, maybe six feet tall. And the top is open. And so what people that do the showcases do is they put their larger items on top. So if I get a really nice heavy uh, plate stand, this can be up there, it'll take up some space and maybe attract some people from farther parts of the mall. So. It's not the most attractive design. You know, this is probably getting into the 70s, 80s of their you know cutoff. Daher ceased to exist as a company under that name in 1982, so I'm still feel fairly confident that I can put this in the in the mall. You know, that's prior to 1979, but this is probably getting close to the end uh, where they converted over just based on those that floral design. But I don't know for sure. But it's a nice big size and. Um, I, I think I, I, I've got a buck into it. I think I could easily sell that for 10 bucks, uh, even at the mall. Um, some other items that I had in the bin, finished with those. I've got to look these up. What I think these are, are um, they're marked the Pillsbury Company 1971. What I think these are, are um, the little oven uh the the light the light ovens now i can't think of what they're called light light and bake no easy bake the easy bake ovens they're just these really shallow dishes that really wouldn't make much more than a thick cookie uh which is exactly what you would have had in one of those little easy bake ovens because you were making effectively pancakes so i've got to do a little bit of digging uh they're they're very clearly dated with the stamp so they're they'd be fine to go into the antique mall um, these got thrown into the bin. So again, they were originally marked a dollar each. Uh, each one was marked for a dollar. Before I put them in the bin, I got him to accept a dollar for the set. And then I put them in the bin. So the whole set became 50 cents. So that one, it was not gonna be a big money maker, but I thought that was kind of nice. Uh, trivet, I had mentioned the other trivet. You know, this trivet is made in the USA. Uh, come in, sit down, relax, converse. Our house doesn't always look like this. Sometimes it's even worse. Okay, there was a poem in there. I guess I should have said it more appropriately. But uh, this also would have been 25 cents, but I put it in the bin. So I'll just say that's still 25 cents. Um, I think there's enough age on this that could probably go into the showcase. It's, it's age nebulous. Um, I probably wouldn't want to put this on Etsy. There, I, there would never be enough value to something that by, by itself. But I thought that was a cute little addition. Uh, to go with the Coca-Cola glasses, uh, they had this set of Coca-Cola Santa Coca-Cola coasters, set of four of them. Ironically enough, one of them is in pretty rough shape. It's got wrinkled or something. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I've got four glasses. We'll deal with it. Well, now I only have three glasses. So I'll probably still include the fourth one, but the value will be in the three good ones. Those are part of the bin. So again, 50 cents uh, for those. Um, these, I'm not sure there's much value to these, but I thought they would look good in my showcase. Kind of quirky from the 70s. Uh, there was this, this needlework, and I'm not sure what it's called because it's, I believe it's cruel work. I know it's not cross stitch. I'm not 100% sure if it's needlepoint, um, but there's much, there, the lines are longer running, so they're stretching. I think that means it's cruel, but this part is actually three-dimensional. Her bun 
actually is the the yarn has come away and has been tied up and this one actually has a ponytail you can play with so this pair i just thought was neat you know so again not going to be a huge lot of value it'll look would go into my uh, showcase be perfect for the age and i just thought it was, it was kind of interesting um also once i decided to get the bin i decided to go ahead and try some mugs i've stayed away from mugs for the most part but they had a few in there that I thought were worth trying. So this was a Japan, a uh, marked Japan on the bottom. And this one is penguins, which I thought was kind of cute. Uh, this one I thought was really cute. Um, I've seen this one before and I was a little surprised. It's dated 1996. I would have thought this was much newer than this. But it's wanted in five neighborhoods on 17 counts of larceny, sus suspect at large with a three pound stash of bird seed in his cheeks. Estimated street value $1.37. So you've got the wanted poster of these squirrels. So I just thought that was cute. Um, and because it's dated, it definitely is something I could sell on Etsy, but most likely that'll be something I'll do. I might save up some mugs and do a special sale in the Facebook group um, because sometimes they do stuff with mugs. Uh, this was another one that was dated. It said made in Thailand, which I'd also been staying away from, but it was dated 1996, so I felt it was safe. Uh, this might be one of those things that sits around until Father's Day, but it is a fish mug that's in really good condition, and it actually has the little fish on the inside as well, which is kind of cute. Uh, and then this other mug that I had picked up is marked Essentials Japan on the bottom, and but that's all it says, Essentials Japan. So I was trying to do a little bit of Googling. I couldn't really find anything on it. It's in French. And it's kind of a country design uh, with, I know that if is is eggs, I do not know what volaille or gibert is. I'm assuming they're still French and I'm sorry, I've just slaughtered a national language. Um, I'm assuming one of those is a chicken maybe, maybe a bunny, I do not know because that's what's on there. You got a turkey, a bunny, some chickens and a basket of eggs. And it's the same design on both sides. What's really nice, and you can't really tell from the picture, but it's a really nice satiny finish on this blue on blue. It's just a really attractive mug. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get much value. I haven't found any other comps for this, but as mugs go, particularly if I end up selling it in one of the Facebook groups, I mean, this to me would be something somebody would pay five, six, seven bucks for just because it's a good looking mug, not so we're worried about what the label is on the bottom. Uh, the other one, other two mugs that I picked up go with a, a kind of, not really go as a set, but they are obviously related. The individual at this estate sale clearly had some relationship to Watkins, which I think is a maybe a spice company, if I remember correctly, um, because they had a lot of cookbooks that were Watkins, they had ornaments that were Watkins, and they had this pie plate, which is marked a fireside French apple pie plate. It has the remnants of a foil sticker on the bottom, but it, there's no way to read it. And it is dated 2000 and then has the apple pie recipe on the back. But it has a very attractive winter design, kind of Christmassy theme with that um, very aesthetic um, Carpenter Gothic uh, archway in the window. That same image is also represented on these mugs. Now the mugs are marked 2001, so they're actually gonna fall outside of the Etsy rules. So these might again be something on Facebook, but they're clearly Watkins mugs. They're marked very clearly on the side. And on the bottom is a hot cocoa recipe. So there's a pair of mugs. All of this got thrown into that mix. So if I sell the set of three together, again, I'm only out 50 cents for all three of them. I think it's something that will be very easy to sell because they're, unfortunately, it's probably too late in the season to sell them now, but they're just really attractive pieces um, that I think uh, people will want to pick up. Uh, the la let's see, the another stack that I got from the um, estate sale was a set of books. Not sure I want to get into books, but I do sell books for a living. And so I'm in libraries on average, one to two libraries every day. So if I want to get into books, I have a pretty good source because they have book sales all the time. So I really was selective and picked up only a handful of books. Uh, and I got every book I'm about to show you, I got for a total of $4. So I don't have a lot of money you know, invested in this. But this one is the Williamsburg Art of Cookery. There's a little bit of staining on the cover. It is the 10th edition, 1965. 
Um, there is some value to this. They are selling between eight and ten dollars online. So it's age-wise can go on Etsy. They do sell. Uh, I picked it up specifically because I am a fan of Colonial, Colonial Williamsburg. I know there's a very large fan base of Williamsburg that I think this will be a good keyword uh, to work with uh, selling online. Um, I am not a poetry fan. You know, judge me if you wish. That's not something I ever consider. I don't know anything about poetry. I don't even appreciate it, whatever. Dr. Seuss is about as sophisticated as I get in that regard. But this is a book of poetry that I was really intrigued by because of all of the illustrations. From doing some research, this, uh, this is the, A Place on Earth by Gwen Frostick. There's all kinds of comps online for this. There's a couple different versions. This does not appear to be a first edition. When I first saw this, a lot of these drawings appear to be original drawings. And so I wasn't sure what exactly I had. A lot of these were, were printed and then seemed to be colored in. And I thought, well, you know, maybe this was the original, the original um, draft of the book that went to the publisher, might have been the artist proof, something like that. Turns out this cover is not the newest edition. Uh, so that is not what this would be. This, from what I can tell, based on some of the others, might be a fact that this used to be a simple list, a book of illustrated illustrations that somebody decided to color in. And I think there's a fun entry at the back that they took an image that's in the second to last page, which is just the black and white image of this tree with a squirrel on the branch, you can see there. They have another version of it on the next page and somebody has drawn, colored in some birds. And then there's text off to the side. And this is why I thought it might have been some sort of like an author proof or something. Because somebody has literally written into this book asking the person who did it or drew it, I have two small questions. Why? Question mark. One squirrel? Question mark. One upside down robin? Question mark. I don't know what that means. There's no name written into it. It's just kind of a nifty little book. Uh, Age-wise, it's, it's something I believe it's from the 60s from one of the other posts that I found. Probably just put this in, in, my, uh, in my showcase. Probably only gonna sell for a few bucks because I don't even know what it is. So we shall see. There was a whole set of individual cookbooks and pamphlets and postcards. Um, again, all of this was all part of four bucks. So I'm not sure if I will sell these as a set but I've got the Chocolate Lover's Cookbook. I've got two postcards from Darlana Lexand that have Anna Sternberg's name as the artist that have similar designs that I just thought that those were you know, attractive. This was what really made me pick it up. Eat the right foods, beat the heat, and help beat the axis. So this is clearly a World War II promotional pamphlet. On the back, it's got the U USS, and it says, for victory by United States savings, bonds, and stamps. So this entire thing is what you can do to avoid heat sickness, um, what foods you should be eating to beat the heat uh, so that you are healthy and you're not wasting energy uh, during World War II. So there's actually two of these in um, the set. So I picked those up. There is a Revere's Guide to Better Cooking, specifically for Revere wear. There's definitely some age to this uh, pamphlet. I don't think I found a published date on it, but just based, I mean, this is probably from 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. This is a newspaper that, not really sure what I'm gonna do with it, but it is dated March 23rd, 1943. And there's just some very interesting advertisements in here that I think this will just go into my um, showcase. And I think somebody would be interested simply for some of the advertisements. And then there's this little um, advert, uh, it's like a little, not a menu, it's, ba it's called Freezer Foods. And it's the price point for all the foods from February of 1946 that were sold, I'm assuming, at this grocery store, although the grocery store itself is not named, just as Freezer Foods Incorporated and then the address. So maybe the name of the company was Freezer Foods Incorporated. Um, but you could buy a boneless sirloin steak for 55 cents a pound, leg of lamb, 42 cents a pound, um, lamb kidneys, yum, 28 cents a pound, 
they're probably still only 28 cents a pound because who would eat them? Um, so anyway, there's just some really nifty things in there. I just thought were kind of fun and would be something to kind of, again, fill in my booth. Another set of children's books that I had picked up. This was Look and Look Again, The Missing Snowman, Missing Snowman, The Lost in the Haunted Mansion, and The Silly Schoolhouse. So it's a nice little set of three. Um, they're, I think they're from the 90s, yeah, 1991. So I could do them on Etsy, uh, or have to, because I can't do them at the, I can't do them in my showcase, or I might sell these through the Facebook group. I just think a set of these three vintage books won't get me a lot of money, but if you cost dollar cost average the set of books, this was under a dollar. So I could make enough money to, to recoup that. And then this was a fun addition. And it's a little bit massive, and I'm not really going to be able to do it justice here, but it's the wall chart of world history. And it's this big bound book that basically is just the cover because you then have this artwork that unfolds and ends up being several feet long. And it's from the 80s. Uh, they sell fairly regularly in the 10 to... $15 range. Um, again, I've got less than a dollar into it. Uh, it's something, again, I'll have to either sell on Etsy or through the Facebook group, but it, it was just kind of a nifty, I don't remember seeing that. So um, I just thought that was, and it's in very good condition. It was clearly never taken out of its book, uh, the book itself, and even the corners of the book are in really nice shape. Uh, the last item that I have to show, if you're still with me, apologize, this did run, run a little bit longer than I liked. Uh, got this again at Goodwill. I paid full price for this. Yellow was full price. Uh, it was $4 because looking at it, this just looked super cool. I mean, this is clearly a you know, 50s, 60s barware piece. It's a dispenser. All the pieces are still in there. The uh, top unscrews off. There's still the little siphoning piece that would you know, grab the liquid. But when I brought it home and did a little bit of research, it, I discovered that this is supposed to be sitting into a... Uh, kind of a cradle and the cradle would then have six uh, prongs that came off of it and would hold six matching shot glasses so I need to see if I can go back to this to the uh, Goodwill this was in a separate section from the shot glasses I don't typically look at the shot glasses I need to go back and look at the shot glasses and see if they have the six of these because the graphics on this are super great and it's gonna be hard to see because it's glass but you know, you've got the bird within the frosted, it's all silver decor. You've got the uh, silver decoration, you've got the plants on there and flowers, but it just, I love that bird. And then this little zigzag uh, rickrack pattern at the bottom. Um, it is uh, stamped on the, on the bottom. Um, and I, I meant to write down what that was. I'll, I'll try and type it in uh, below. Um, it was something Illinois. I want to say Ohio, Illinois, but I don't think that's right. But anyway, it turns out it's missing its cradle. It's missing its six shot glasses. And even if you had all of those, the entire piece typically will only sell for 20 bucks, which to be honest, surprises me a little bit, but really who's siphoning out alcohol and shot glasses anymore. So this by itself, probably 10 bucks. Yeah. So this is going to go in my showcase. If I can find this, the the shot glasses, I'd like to be able to add those just to keep the collection together. Uh, I doubt I'm gonna have any luck finding the cradle because that would have been a very odd shaped item that it's probably been dis, uh, uh, thrown out by now. If I can find this, the shot glasses, great, but those are probably gonna cost me 50, to $1, 50 cents to a dollar each. So if I add you know, anywhere from three to six dollars onto the cost of this, you know, to put $10 into this to only get 20, I might be just as fine just selling this for 10 uh, and not even worrying about the shot glasses. So that was kind of a fun, uh, a fun ad. And, uh, oh, I've got one, sorry, one little stack left, I kind of forgot. So these ended up being a set of plates that I picked up. Um, and I'm gonna show you these three. These two, I actually went back to a antique mall that I had been to before. I'd picked up two of these previously. They are marked business class from Lot Polish Airlines. They are little dishes, butter pats, condiment dishes, whatever the case may be from their business class on their airlines. They are hand painted and they're from the, 
Yeah, I'm not even going to try. W-T-O-C-T-A-W-E-K porcelain factory made in Poland. That's what makes these actually somewhat valuable. So I picked up the two of these for two bucks. I already have the two listed. I haven't sold them yet, but I do have them listed. There are comps showing that these are selling for anywhere from five to ten dollars each. So I now have a total of four. I haven't decided if I'm going to merge these two with the other two I already have listed or if I'm going to list these as a separate pair because these have a slightly different design. The other design is basically this design but all in blue. And this one has the this design in blue and brown. And this one um, is almost all brown or is all brown. So these kind of go together. The other two definitely go together. So I haven't decided necessarily how I'm going to do this, but I definitely wanted to pick those up. And then the final thing I wanted to show, because I'd like your help. If anyone's still here, oh my goodness, it's been an hour. But if anyone's still with me, help. So I found this plate. Found it at Goodwill. It was a dollar. It is adorable. I believe it's a baby penguin, but I do not know that. There is a uh, signature on the bottom. Hopefully you can read that, otherwise I will read it. It says M, and I believe it says Gustarsson, or, or Gustarsson. G-U-S-T-A-R, and it looks like possibly an I-S-O-N, but the I is questionable. But on the back, it has a registration number. And that, would ha that is what has, has me intrigued. It says hand painted, and then it has this registration number, but I don't know what it's a registration number of. So this did come from Illinois, but if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know I traveled to Minnesota quite a bit. And in Minnesota, one of the things that a lot of Goodwills have up there are items that were created by Target, and they are the test items. So it is, you know, a plate in a red glaze and there's all the notes on the back saying this is how the glaze was created. And then in some cases there's even paperwork or there's a label attached to it with individual auto signatures or initials of people signing off to say, yes, this is accepted. Or in some cases, no, it's not accepted. So I th that was a really interesting. I've never picked any of them up because I don't know what the market is. But that's what this made me think of is that this is a registration number that maybe somebody created this design and this design is a published you know porcelain plate pattern out there collector's plate dinner plate something along those lines and there's this it's been registered but i can't i did a search for the registration number i did a search by the author i did a search for baby penguin fuzzy penguin fuzzy bird baby bird every combination i could come up with didn't even come up with anything remotely looking like this so if anybody has any tips on what the little bird is i would appreciate it because i haven't i i i haven't listed any of this stuff yet but this one i really want to do the research on because i think it could be something i don't want to say it could be something special in the value way but it could be something special in the sense that maybe this is a prototype or maybe this is something that is in itself unique simply because it was maybe what was used to get approval for something else. Or it could be totally off, but I have no idea what else a registration number would be representing all these. I do think it's modern. The last two digits of the registration number are 40, but I have no, I have no belief that this is something from 1940. So I don't know what the registration numbers mean. But you got a baby penguin. So if you have any thoughts, or if you don't think it's a penguin, please let me know what it is. Uh, would love to hear it. and. Um, Love to be able to uh, get all these things listed. So again, in, after an hour into this, I need to either stop buying as much or stop talking so much. But um, great uh, showing you all of this information. I'll try and get these all things up onto Etsy. If you're in the Rockford area, please stop by my store. Some of these things will be uh, in my showcase, L5 at the East State Antiques Mall uh, on State Street in Rockford. And if you're interested in anything else that I've got on my Etsy store, follow me on Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, all at TH Mercantile. That's Trusty Huckster Mercantile. And obviously you've already found me on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Like, comment, share it, do anything you uh, can. I'd love to get uh, this built, uh, my channel built up. And if you have any comments, uh, even, hey, you talk too much, you need these vid videos to be shorter, I'll take them and figure out how to do this uh, better going forward. Thank you very much uh, for joining me and I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.